Hello, my name is Dr. Craig Wright, and I'm going to talk about a few different topics that are sort of different to what I normally talk about, but directly related. The first one involves some of the areas that we talk about constantly in, in the industry I'm in, which is decentralization. Now, George Orwell had a, a term, Newspeak, and many things have changed over the last few years. The version of what uh, capitalism happens to be has been radically altered and profit has been made bad. And decentralization has been created into something involving technology. It's not. The term decentralization really refers to bringing things out to the edges. We see this in government. Rather than a big central government, we want to have lots of smaller entities where people can try things and experiment. In a federalist system, like in the United States, the Federalist Paper Number 10 by Madison details some of the problems with democracy and why this is a republic and not a democracy. And people undermine that all the time. The point here is different states have different rules, not so that they can just be different for the sake of being different, but so that they can experiment and try things and that's one of the great aspects of the United States. Not that it's a democracy where the majority gets to do anything, but where you have a constitution that sets rules, that sets boundaries. And the same thing happens within any industry that works. You need boundaries and rules. For a market to work, it needs boundaries and rules. So decentralization isn't just about having nodes and it isn't about Silicon Valley controlling everything. It's about individuals trading, exchanging. It's about people. Decentralization is about direct exchange, peer-to-peer -peer between people, so that one person can go to another. They can haggle, debate, argue, invoice, all of that stuff. But it's not like people say with Bitcoin or Ethereum about a central system running a few nodes. Nodes aren't what makes Bitcoin decentralized. Nodes aren't the answer. Nodes index in these systems. They record information. But the exchange should be decentralized. When Alice goes up to Bob, Alice and Bob communicate, exchange, document what they're doing, record what they want to do, the sale, the invoice, the purchase order, all of that stuff individually. It has nothing to do with nodes, it has nothing to do with people outside in the world, it has to do with them. And whether we're talking about politics or anything else, moving things to the edge is always a good idea. It allows far more experimentation. And when we have more experimentation, we have innovation. And when we have innovation, we have growth. Now, we have this idea in society that really stems from Marx. Marx and Engels talked about the problem with capitalism, which was the surplus. That surplus that the capitalist is taking, not because they're not working, like people say. Any capitalist has to work, or they go broke. They work with their mind, and they innovate. And that's what really we're talking about. And that is what makes society grow. We talk about profit, and then we talk about how society is going to have um, exploitation, but we're in the best time in human history. Not slightly better, remarkably better. So we're looking at a world that is getting progressively better. And we don't want a world government. We don't want everything centralized, not for climate, not for European ideas. What we want is to decentralize by pushing things out, out to the edge. So we can experiment, and we can try, and occasionally fail, but learn from our failures. So back to this idea of decentralization. The federal policy implemented within this country where I'm now, in the United States, was all about having the states balanced with a central sort of controlled government that had limited power. And this is the point of decentralization. It is to limit the amount of power that any one person has, any one group has. That problem can be there in democracies as well. 
the reason you have a non-democratic system here, why it's a republic where the people are sovereign, isn't so that everyone can have a change of everything on a whim. It is so that you elect people who will slow down change. Not so that you progress and be progressive for the sake of it, running to the edge of the cliff like lemmings and then running over without looking, without viewing where you're going. Progress is fine, but what are you progressing to? That's a question you always need to ask. Why are you doing this? What are you taking away from? Because every decision you make, every economic or political change has repercussions that flow. You should be the person engaged in trade. You should be the one owning your own information. You should be the one determining your life. That's what you should be taking back. When power is limited, when it's decentralized, people can move and change where they live. When power is decentralized, we can try different ideas and people can see what's happening. Part of the creation of the blockchain wasn't, like people are saying, censorship-resistant money, but censorship-resistant information. Bitcoin, Ethereum, any of these things can all be seized. They can be frozen. But what can't happen is the information of why that happened. It has to be there. So if an oppressive government decides to take your money, they can. But first of all, they need to find it. And once they do, they need to make it public for the world. They need everybody, anywhere, anytime to be able to look at this and see what has happened. And it's only with information that we can act. It's only as a global community that is knowledgeable that we can act. And this is only going to work when we push things to the edges, just like a democracy or even better, a republic. When you have a republic, people need to be virtuous. Thank you.